Fargo, the new virtual assistant from Wells Fargo, makes banking faster and easier. Like this. Fargo, what's my checking account routing number? And this. Fargo, uh, turn off my debit card. And this. Fargo, what did I spend on groceries last month? And that's just the beginning. Do you, Fargo? You can in the Wells Fargo mobile app. Learn more at wellsfargo.com slash getfargo. Terms and conditions apply. Your mobile carrier's availability and message and data rates may apply. Wells Fargo Bank and a member of DIC. Today, we'll talk about how to maximize the Disney Dining Plan in 2024. That's coming up on this episode 397 of WW Prep to Go. Hello and welcome to WW Prep to Go, where we talk strategy and ideas for people planning their Disney World trips. I am your host, Shannon Albert from WDWPrepSchool.com. Thank you for being here for episode 397. This is a standalone episode. They are kind of few and far between with all the trip reports, but I like doing them. I like mixing up and having different formats. And so today we're going to talk about the dining plan because there's a lot of information to know if you've never used it before, but I also want to talk about how to maximize it if you have purchased it for your trip. As always, a reminder to follow on social media. If you don't already do that, please go to WGW Prep School on your favorite platforms. Also, a reminder that we partner with Smart World Vacation. So if you're interested in getting quotes for Disney World, Disneyland, Adventures by Disney, Disney Cruise, they can help you out. They are not only one of the very top, if not the top, Disney-focused travel agency in the world, but just a fantastic group of people. And some of the nicest, most professional, smartest people I've met in this entire niche. So it is very easy to partner with them knowing that they know what they are doing and can take care of you so well. So that is always a recommendation. If you're interested in getting a quote, I would highly suggest them. Um, I want to thank everybody for the positive reactions to the trip report last week, the one with Annabelle. When I am recording, I usually have a pretty good sense if people are going to enjoy it. And this time I thought, this is definitely a good one, but it's a different kind of guest. And, you know, still, it was fantastic. It made it even better because somebody being that young and having that much interest in planning is so fun to listen to. And she did a fantastic job. So thank you to uh, those people who, you know, sent in their, their feedback and positive thoughts and comments. And also to Annabelle for being such a great guest. If you want to be a trip report guest, the only way to do that is the speak pipeline. You have to leave a voicemail there. I played Annabelle's message from the last episode. It's a great example. It only has to be one to two minutes given the basic details. In the very early days of doing trip reports, I accepted it by email and then I would get on to record and it would be somebody who was too afraid to speak or was hard to understand and those kind of things. And so we do require a voicemail so that we can hear your voice and know that you are comfortable with speaking when you're being recorded, as well as getting the details of your trip. So we know that if we want to book it, so it's a multi, multi-purpose uh, reason that we ask for the speak pipe mes- messages, but that is the only way to be a guest. So highly recommend submitting it that way. And then if we're interested, usually guests are contacted one to two months ahead of time. And it'll be my podcast producer who reaches out to get the pre-trip and post-trip interviews scheduled. They appear on my calendar and I just show up and that's how those work. So if you're interested, please submit and uh, hopefully we can get some of you scheduled for your upcoming trips this year. For this episode, though, I wanted to talk about the Disney dining plan because it is new to so many people because it hasn't been around in four years Or if you used to use it and you're wondering how it's changed, I can talk about that as well because it has changed in some regard. I do want to start with the basics of just sort of what it is, how much it costs, and then I'll move into some more advanced information, including how to maximize your credits 
as I'm going through this, do not feel the need to memorize the different prices or numbers or information that I'm giving you because we have a whole article that with a lot more information that I will link to in the show notes so that you can reference it. That includes tables of every uh, charts of every table service and quick service meal in all of Walt Disney World and how much the credits are worth at those. So we have huge spreadsheets, no surprise. We specialize in in having spreadsheets and infographics and anything to help explain. And that includes for the Disney dining plan. But I'm going to go over the basics here, and then you can click off to read even more if you would like. Let's start with just the sort of overall basic information about the Disney dining plan, starting with the fact that it can be added on to a package that includes your hotel and tickets. So Disney defines a package as hotel plus tickets, but if you want to add the dining plan, it can be a third element to that package. There also is such thing as a ticketless package for annual pass holders, people using military tickets and DVC reservations. And that means you don't have to buy the tickets as part of your package. So for instance, I'm an annual pass holder. So if I want a Disney dining plan, I'm never going to have a package that is hotel plus tickets, but Disney will let me and others do ticketless packages where we have the hotel plus the dining plan. That it are the that's kind of the options for adding it. You can't do it like as an offsite guest or anything like that. Purchasing the Disney dining plan allows you to prepay for your food and you use those credits to buy the food during your trip. So it's really just a, a prepaid food method, which many people love. The number of credits that you get is determined by the number of nights you're staying, not the number of days. So once you have your trip book, you'll have to use the number of nights to compute the number of credits. It must be purchased for everybody on your reservation and for the whole trip. So if you're like, hey, we've got four people in this room and I want to make the dining plan for two people, that's not going to be allowed. Or if you're like, you know, I really only need it for a couple of days, that's not allowed either. So you're either all in or you're not at all. It works, the credits work from your check-in to midnight on your checkout day. So on your checkout day, you know, usually people are checked out by 11 a.m., but you can continue to use your credits after that through midnight. The price on the dining plan, there are two two different kinds of dining plans. One is called the like regular basic Disney dining plan. And that one is $94.28 for adults and $26.69 for kids. That one includes one table service credit per night of your stay, one quick service credit per night of your stay, and one snack per night of your stay. The other dining plan is the quick service dining plan. That one is $57.01 for adults, $23.83 for kids. That includes two quick service credits per night of your stay and one snack per night of your stay. Both of those plans also include a refillable mug at your resort. You just go pick it up in your like quick service or food court of your resort, and then you can refill it unlimited at your resort or any resort. You just cannot refill it in the parks. Now, I want you to remember those kid prices of being $23 or $26 for the dining plan because when we start talking about how to, uh, like we booking promotions and things, and when they say the kids dining is free, you're going to use that number to compute it. Now let's talk about using your credits. So now you've, you've purchased them as part of a dining plan and you want to be able to use them. You can redeem them if you have a magic band or a room key at places that take dining plan credits. And most places do take Disney dining plan credits at Walt Disney World. You can, it's just like a room charge which you have to have a magic band or a room key for. They can also be used when mobile ordering. So if you're you know, at a quick service place doing a mobile order, it will take credits from your quick service allotment if you want to use them to pay. You can keep track of your credits using the receipt that is given to you at you know any of the places where you use it at the bottom. It will tell you how many credits are left and or using My Disney Experience. So you'll go to your resort hotel reservation section of My Disney Experience, and they have a dining plan part of that, which will tell you how many credits you have. You can use the credits anytime. 
not per day. So for instance, I said that the regular dining plan gives you one table service, one quick service, and one snack per night of your stay, but you don't have to use them that way. They are given to you as a big pile. Like that's how it's computed, you know, number of nights times that many credits, but they're given to you all at once. So on the first day, you could use three table service credits if you want, and the next day use none. It's You can use them anytime from your check-in through midnight on your checkout day. Most people do tend to use them per day as they are allotted, but that's not a requirement. When you use a quick service credit, it will include an entree and a drink, and that includes alcoholic drinks and milkshakes or any kind of like premium drink like that if you are at a place that serves those. So for instance, some people will will think um, Magic Kingdom quick service restaurants don't have alcohol, so that's not a good use of a quick service credit. So that's one option there. Uh, Table service credits include a drink, an entree, and a dessert, although there is no dessert included at breakfast. It also includes one premium drink where available, such as alcohol or milkshake or smoothie, something like that. Most table service restaurants are one credit, but some of them are two credits. This includes signature restaurants, you know, the fancier restaurants, as well as lunch and dinner at Acker Shoes, festival dining packages, and hoopty Do review. Snack credits can be used for anything that has a DDP icon on the menu. So we've talked about quick service and table service restaurants and and you can search for those restaurants like in my Disney experience and it'll tell you if it's a quick service or table service. Snacks are not labeled within the app or on the menus. They are labeled in person. And so when you go up to like a quick service place or a snack cart or a festival booth at Epcot, the menus there have a little icon next to them if they are considered a snack. So that is how you redeem those. It's good for lots of different things like, you know, could be bottled water, ice cream treats, just lots of different snacks in the parks. Let's talk about why people get the dining plan because it does vary. The number one reason I think is to make trips feel all inclusive. There is a lot of nickel and diming and I would argue it it's hard to make a trip feel all-inclusive because there's so many things to purchase a la carte, but it does help. So if you're already paying for your hotel and tickets ahead of time, well, now your dining is taken care of. You still have to think about things like Genie Plus, individual lightning lanes, that sort of thing. But it can help because you don't have to worry about the large expense of dining if it's already been paid for. The second reason is that sometimes it is free. Now, free dining has just returned for this year and people do love free dining. And so of course they are going to get the dining plan in order to take advantage of free dining. I do want to caution you though, to always do the math. So for instance, I said earlier to remember that the kids dining plan is only ever like 23, $26. So if they are telling you that, you know, kids dining plan is free, you have to go, okay, that saves me 23 to $26 a day. That's not a ton of money, depending on how many kids you have and that kind of thing. But you need to always do the math. However, sometimes people do make it work and it makes good sense to to book free dining. It's just hard because the rules around free dining are so rigid because they'll say, these resorts are eligible, a minimum number of nights. You have to have park hopper tickets, which cost more money than, you know, base tickets. And then you can get the dining plan. But the level of dining plan you get varies depending on, you know, which kind of resort you're staying in. So the rules can be sometimes very strict and make it not worth it. But sometimes it is worth it. The third reason that people get the dining plan is to save money. But I will say that this group is in the minority because it is so, so difficult to save money. We will talk in just a moment about how to do that. In the past, this was much, much easier to do. It, it really was a way that you could, it, it was easy to maximize your credits because the dining plan costs less, because more was included, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. However, it is possible for people to save money if they play their cards right. Speaking of the dining plan in the past, I wanted to talk about a few things that have changed since the before times, in case you used it before. 
I wanted to um, go over some of those so that you know. One is that the quick service credits are now divided between adults and kids. In the past, quick service credits were issued as one big pile of quick service credits. So you could use a child's quick service credit for an adult meal because it was just one big group, but now they are divided. So if you have a child in your group under 10 years old, they are going to get a kid's quick service credit and you'll have to order a kid's meal with that. The second is you cannot easily redeem one quick service for three snacks. Now, when we were there in January and we were doing Festival of the Arts, we had the Disney dining plan. And at the end, we had extra quick service credits. And it was very upsetting to me because we were eating all that festival food. And we asked repeatedly if we could use a quick service credit for three snacks. And we were told no. I have heard of other people occasionally being able to do it, but it used to be very easy to do. And now it doesn't seem to be. The third thing that has changed is that using credits for other people isn't as easy. So if you were following along in January, you will know that we did use the dining plan credits for for someone who was not on the dining plan. And it is possible. You just have to have split bills because when they run your like room key or your magic band, they are looking to see how many people are on the dining plan on your reservation. And then they look at your bill and go, okay, how many entrees or meals or credits does this have? And for instance, we had two people on the dining plan in our room, but three eating a meal. And so that wouldn't work because they would say, you've only purchased the dining plan for two people. You are trying to pay for three. So what we learned to do was just split the check and we would have two people on one and one on the other. And they were running the same thing. They were running the magic band or the key of the world card on the same room. And it would tell them two people each time they checked it, right? So it's a little bit of a workaround, but some places may not allow it. Officially, I don't think it's allowed, but it, does work sometimes if you split the check and just don't exceed the number um, that is on the dining plan. Hello, Saver. Whether you're saving for that trip to the tropics or saving for an emergency, now is the time to take advantage of Wells Fargo savings options. Wells Fargo offers savings accounts that can help you save towards your goals. So what are you saving for? Visit a Wells Fargo branch or wellsfargo.com slash save to open a savings account today. Wells Fargo Bank, N.A., member FDIC. Okay, let's talk about maximizing credits because this is for the people that really want to make it a good financial decision. Roughly speaking, we have computed the value of a credit. So a quick service credit, table service credit, snack credit. The value of a quick service credit is about $23. Table service credits are worth about $59 and snack credits are worth about $6. Now that means in order to come out ahead, you have to be above those numbers. So you're going to have to go get a quick service meal that is above $23, a table service meal that is above $59, a snack that is above $6, right? That is hard to do. We do have lists of things that are good values of credits. In general, the good use of credits is character meals. Anytime you order steak, lobster, milkshakes, alcohol, or any snack over $6. A bad use of credits includes things that are two credit meals because it cuts the value of your credit in half, which takes the value way down. And, and also breakfast, because breakfast tends to be less expensive. And also you can't order dessert with that like you can lunch and dinner. So those are not a great deal. I think it is counterintuitive when we say that two credit meals are not a good use because people on their head will think, well, this is going to cost me more. So why wouldn't I use credits? But if we are talking strictly the value of a credit, it is not a good use. I have a handful of things to mention that are like best uh, table service credits, quick service credits and snacks, but we have huge lists, as I mentioned at the beginning, where you can go read an article um, and we have everything listed. And so you can 
start to decide if different uh, places are worth eating if you're on the dining plan. For table service credits, the following have values of up to $77. And I mentioned that table service credits are at a minimum worth about $59. So anytime, anything over that is going to be uh, helping you come out ahead. So these have values of up to $77, depending on what you order, which in many cases does include ordering alcohol. Chef Mickey's dinner, Crystal Palace lunch and dinner, Hollywood and Vine lunch and dinner, Ohana dinner, Tusker house lunch and dinner, Garden Grill lunch and dinner. So you'll notice that's a whole bunch of character meals, lunch and dinner, plus Ohana, which is not a character meal at dinner. So those are the top like five or six, however many was on that list, which will give you a high value. If you had to pay out of pocket, it would be in the like 60 to $75 range. For quick service credits, these have values of up to $35. And as I mentioned previously, quick service credits are worth about 23. So anything above that is going to be in your favor. That includes Polite Pig Lunch and Dinner, which is in Disney Springs, Docking Bay 7 Lunch and Dinner, which is at Hollywood Studios. Both of those are fantastic quick service locations. Siesta's Cantina and El Mercado de Coronado Lunch and Dinner. Those are both at Coronado Springs. And you guys know I'm a huge fan of Coronado Springs. I am not a fan of those food options, but they are good value. And lastly is La Cantina de San Angel, a lunch and dinner at Epcot. So those are a handful of good quick service credits. And then finally, the snack credits. Now, this one has been tricky for us over the years. There are so many snacks, it's hard to sort of wrangle a list together, but we actually do have an article coming out probably as this is being published, but it is about the best use of a snack credit. As I mentioned before, snack credits are worth about $6. So anything over that is going to be good for you financially. There are a lot of Epcot festival foods that count as snacks and are above $6. And in fact, might be the best use of snack credits is um, for those festival foods. Mickey pretzels, which are available everywhere, are usually around $8. So those are good snacks. Ice cream sundaes and shakes are in the $7 to $8 range usually. So those are good snack credit uses. You also might want to look into Starbucks drinks, especially if you are getting something with lots of add-ons and flavors and things added, because it can be in the, I don't know, 9 or $10 range for those drinks, but it still counts as a snack. So that is that. Now let's talk about, is it, is it worth it? Is the Disney dining plan worth it? So first of all, I think it is going to be worth it for anybody doing it for like mental or emotional reasons. Like, I just don't want to think about the price. Let's move on and just enjoy our trip. You know, hard to, hard to argue with that. The second group is those people who plan to do a lot of character meals and order alcohol because when you are, so so character meals tend to be some of the very most expensive. So that's a no brainer. Ordering alcohol adds your credit value, you know, it adds to your credit value. So it really increases that. Um, We do not recommend it for people that aren't doing character meals um, who want to do a lot of breakfast because breakfast tend to cost less and don't have that dessert included. And also for people who don't eat that much food. So if the amount of food that you are being given isn't the amount of food that you want to eat, especially if you have kids that are 10 and older, but they don't eat adult portions, you're going to be paying adult prices for them, but they may not be eating adult portions. So when you have a kid that isn't eating that much, it might be better to pay out of pocket. Um, one group I forgot to mention for it, who it, it could be worth it for is people that are doing the Epcot festivals. Like if you're going to the outdoor kitchens, booths, um, et cetera, there are some really good values for the snack credits. You just have to figure out and make sure you're being careful about using your quick service and table service on a different day or a different time, because sometimes it is hard to manage it all when you're using the snacks for a meal, but financially they're a good use there at the uh, Epcot festivals. So I hope that is helpful. 
I am going to link in the show notes to lots of information about the Disney dining plan to help you. And I think that's it. For more information on this episode, please check the show notes in your podcast app or head to the website, www.prepschool.com. Click on podcast at the top, scroll down to episode 397. Until next time, I will see you on the site. Hello, Saver. Whether you're saving for that trip to the tropics or saving for an emergency, now is the time to take advantage of Wells Fargo's savings options. Wells Fargo offers savings accounts that can help you save towards your goals. So, what are you saving for? Visit a Wells Fargo branch or wellsfargo.com slash save to open a savings account today. Wells Fargo Bank N.A. Member FDIC. 